And the police day ends with me. And we made it one more day. Please forgive me, I'm having some problems with my voice today. I have to start today by letting you know how unbelievably stressful going through this fraudulent warrant and affidavit is for me. It is like reliving all the lies and civil and human rights breaches and having my home torn apart, mud smeared everywhere, property stolen, threatened, and worse. It's like having that all happen all over again, going through this thing. It is truly reading an official government sanctioned nightmare and destruction of my life. I've worked too hard my entire life and have never gotten in trouble knowing about right and wrong, taught by the retired police officer that raised me, my grandfather, and none of that matters to the corrupt Bartlesville police and others involved in this attack on me. With these people's corruption, they will take a law-abiding citizen and just tell the world in a public document that I'm a criminal. I'm sick to death over this. It is beyond stressful and of course a nightmare, but I will try to get through this document. Please bear with me as it will be very hard for me and it is taking a terrible toll on my health. So let's move into today. First, let me read you a short portion of the warrant affidavit, then I'll pop it up on the screen so you can read it for yourself. This is basically what I plan on doing daily. We'll see, but this is likely what I'll do. So let me read it first, then I'll pop it up on the screen. In the District Court of Washington County, State of Oklahoma, and there's a timestamp, and it says filed March 19th, 2015, and there's a signature, and you'll be able to read it, or rather uh, initials. Affidavit for search warrant. Okay, I'll pop that up on the screen now so you can read it. Okay, so let's talk about how this very first portion, small portion of the warrant affidavit is shady at best. A warrant cannot be issued without an affidavit, meaning the warrant is the piece of paper where they say, I can go and I can search someone or someone's house. And the affidavit is the supporting document to create that warrant. And it's supposed to show probable cause and a real reason to go do such a thing that is one of the most, for a law-abiding citizen, it's, it's beyond shocking. For an innocent citizen to go through something like this, you can imagine. I've gone into enough of that over time. But a warrant cannot be issued without an affidavit, sworn under oath, hand on the Bible, swearing to God. That is the law, okay? So why was a warrant issued on March the 6th, 2015, and a raid on my house carried out on that same day, March the 6th, 2015, but it took a full 13 days after the raid on my home to file the affidavit, which is supposed to happen before the warrant? Because the affidavit was filed on March the 19th, 2015. Did you notice that stamp on the screenshot I showed you showing filed on March 19th, 2015? Now, I say shady rather than saying specifically illegal because, because of this. Apparently, Oklahoma allows 10 days to technically file a search warrant affidavit, but it does not require it, okay? So why the delay? Why the delay? It is shady at best and right from the start of the fraudulent affidavit. I mean, you would delay something that's supposed to happen before the warrant if you didn't have it. You, you wanted the warrant, you got a, a, a basically a blank warrant rubber stamped by a judge, you ran in, you did a raid, you found nothing, of course, you stole property, you still found nothing, 
And now you've got to make up a reason for why you did it. So you wait 13 days and then file some fraudulent reasons. And like I've said before, you think they would have done a better job than all this fraudulent, obvious lies, breaches, even misrepresenting the law, lying under oath. Anyway, I'll move on. As mentioned in a, many prior videos, <clears throat> there was a rush to raid my home after I caught the Barlesville police officer that lives two doors down from me on security camera video criminally trespassing on my property and stealing. And this had been going on a long time. And you can go back and watch the, the first few videos that explain this. It had been going on a long time and it finally got so bad on March the 5th, 2015, I went out and bought security equipment, security camera equipment, and I installed it on the afternoon of March the 5th, 2015. And at 6.02 a.m. on March the 6th, 2015, the very next morning, not even 24 hours after buying the security equipment, I caught this police officer that lives two doors down from me armed on my property, criminally trespassing and stealing. Now, that's just a repeat. Please go back and watch the videos from the beginning for all the details. But when I caught him, I told him, I have you on security camera video. Then they rushed down here to raid the house, search for drugs and any other reason to arrest. We know that now. That's proven in the in many videos, including the Barstow Police Proof of Their Crimes video. And they also definitely wanted to get those videos, the security camera videos of me catching a police officer breaking the law. Armed, fully uniformed, criminally trespassing on my property and stealing. They wanted to get those videos and they got them. They broke the law in so many ways. No warrant is valid without an affidavit sworn under oath. Why did it take 13 days to file something that supposedly already existed? That supposedly already existed. Let me repeat it. Why did it take 13 days to file something that supposedly already existed before the warrant was even sought from the judge? Well, it's obvious. It's shady. It's shady business. It's likely because the affidavit didn't exist before the raid on my home. Because it is a kangaroo court that jumps to a conclusion and fills in the backstory with lies and corruption. Just rubber stamps blank warrants to come do anything they want to anyone. It just, this, folks. Just take a step back and don't think in legal terms and don't even try to think about all the details of what's going on. Just think this. Common sense. Common sense. Why would a 13-day delay to file an, the affidavit, why take 13 days to delay filing something that supposedly already existed before the warrant existed? It makes no common sense. Police are supposed to prove a reason to raid a home in advance. This is the United States of America. I've said it before. Gosh, our civil rights are just written on paper. They're just ink now. The Constitution just means nothing. This is going on 15 months. Everyone in, in that, I mean, I reported this everywhere, media, FBI, local, everyone knows about this. There's no reason, I'm not even going to go into it. I've said before, why even vote when you know that they can just, just, just take candidates out like this? I mean, they didn't just take me out as a candidate, they've taken out my entire life. I, I, I won't even be able to eat soon. I won't even be able to eat. I mean, they've taken away every bit of me, everything I've worked for my entire life. You can go back and watch the first few videos and watch 
my education, my ex work experience, how, how I've dedicated myself to educating myself and working hard at the American dream my entire life. I lost my father figure, my, who to me was my father, my grandfather, a retired police officer when I was 16. I didn't fall into trouble. I fought through it. And I did the right things. It's all gone now. It's all gone. I now have this awful criminal act activity stated by the police in a public document for anyone in the world to read. I'll never be employable again. I mean, you have to understand something. When I say that, I mean, with my level of education and experience, I'm unemployable in lower level jobs. They always say you're overqualified. So I cannot get, people would say, well, just go get any job. Well, I, I can't. I've tried. You can't, when you're as qualified as I am, you cannot get a low, lower level job. You are passed over as overqualified. And I can't get a job I'm qualified for because I've not only been blackballed for many years by people I thought used to be friends, Mike Moore and James Brazel and Jane Phillips Medical Center, I, I also have this now. I can't even run for public office in a non-paid position, just a voluntary position, which I was running for. That, that job didn't pay anything. <laughs> what I was running for and spending all that time doing was a voluntary position and there was no pay. I can't even do that. So I can't get a job. I can't feed myself. I'm destroyed financially, socially. I don't have family. Nobody wants to be around somebody that the police are this angry with and they're doing this sort of thing. I'm, I can't run for political office, not with something like this. Can't get a job. They're killing me. I now have a group of at least over 16,000. They put out a press release the other day and said they had now had 350,000 members in that LESMA group I told you about, law enforcement and supporters for media accountability. They're saying they're going to come to my home. Terrorize me. At any, I mean, I don't know if they're going to do it now or they're going to do it a year from now. I don't know when they're going to come. And we've seen what when they come, when police come to my house and they want to do something, they can get a judge to sign off. These people could just come down here and tear me apart, limb by limb. And they're in New York City. They're all across this country. So now I can't even go. I can't even go for a drive. It's not just Bartlesville. If I go out of state, I might get pulled over by a police officer that's one of the 350,000 that are in this LASMA group. They're threatening me. They want to see me, and this is, this is not my words, this is in those podcasts that I showed you. They want to see me victimized. They want to see me taken on the street and have the F beat out of me. They want to be there to see it, and they're coming to my home. There's not a place in the world I'm safe from, the, from this police state. Again, the police are supposed to have a reason to raid a home in advance. In advance. Not come up with it afterwards and then not even have a reason then. <laughs> not raid, then make up a reason. And judges are not supposed to rubber stamp warrants. That's a breach of law, it's a breach of color of law, and it's not only something that someone should lose their job for, that is something that's jailable. This felonious behavior. These people haven't even been written up in their jobs, let alone lose their job, let alone get held accountable with being arrested or anything, nothing, absolutely nothing. They can do anything they want to me and you and anyone else. Judges are not supposed to rubber stamp warrants that don't have probable cause. They're not supposed to rubber stamp a warrant that does have probable cause. They're supposed to have proof. <laughs> because if they do that, then the police do what they did to me. They will just go about raiding people planting evidence they don't and if they, if they don't like, they want to raid people they don't like, they want to slander them, falsely detain them, arrest them, steal their property, and worse. I mean, I can't stress that enough. I mean, I'm sick to death over this. These people have eliminated me as a human being. I have been banished socially. 
Politically, I could never run for office again. I now have this criminal thing hanging out, and while it's technically not a criminal record, there's a public document saying these horrendous things that I'm going to be showing you. I'm blackballed for many jobs, and I've said again, I mean, you can't just go out and get an, a, a lower level job. They'll ju they just say, well, you, you would take, this is, what, this is what they tell me when I go to try to get a lower level job. They say, well, you wouldn't be happy in this job. You're overqualified, you've experienced higher level pay in other jobs, and, and you'll get in this job, you'll be in it for two months, you'll get a little bit of a resume, people will get to know you, you're a hard worker, and then you'll go look for another higher job and you'll just leave. So we're not going to hire you because you're overqualified. We're going to hire someone that's going to stay. We don't want to bring you in and spend the money to go through all that process and then have you leave. And it doesn't matter how I say, well, I won't. I'll sign a contract, say I'll stay for three years or whatever. They just don't want to go through that. So it's impossible for me to be employed. And as I've said before, looking at my time, I know I'm going long. But as I've said before, I, when, they, when they stole all my property like they did, they took away my ability to even make enough money to feed myself. I had to come up with thousands of dollars to replace the property. Thousands of dollars I don't have just to throw it, that sort of thing. As we move forward through this affidavit, you'll see the things that are obviously made up to justify a raid that has no basis in law, no basis in fact, morals, ethics, truth, anything. Right from the start of the Warren Affidavit, we see some shady actions, a 13-day delay from the raid on my home to filing the paperwork that is supposed to exist before the warrant is even issued. It's shady at best. The police state ends with me. And with that said, <clears throat> I'll see you tomorrow.